President Mohamed Buhari has warned ministers and heads of government agencies not to disrespect or undermine the National Assembly. The president said this at a meeting he had with Senate President Ahmad Lawan and House of Representatives Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila on Thursday. Details from presidential spokesperson Garb Bashe, who revealed this. According to him, said ministers and all heads of departments and agencies should at all times conduct themselves in the way that will not undermine the National Assembly as an institution, its leadership and members, Shehu said. The meeting comes on the day the management of the Niger Delta Development Commission walked out on the House of Representatives Committee probing the NDDC's finances. The NDDC leadership accused the chairman of the House Committee of Corruption, saying it would appear only if he steps aside from the probe. Buhari's meeting with the National Assembly leaders also occurs weeks after the member, Minister of State for Labor, Festus Keamo, accused lawmakers of seeking to hijack a government temporary work project. We are now joined by Honorable Ben Igbakpa, Member Federal House of Representatives, and also legal practitioner Laboros Oshoma, who's here in studio uh, to have a conversation. Let me introduce uh, Laboros. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. And of course, Honorable, it's good to have you joining us also. All right. Until we get him, let's uh, start the conversation with you. Libros, you've always referenced the statement, and let me just quote you. Um, as you say, you say in, in, in a state of lawlessness, it becomes lawless to even be law-abiding. Is that what we it see? It becomes illegal. Illegal. <laughs> so is that what we see out play, actually? Yeah. <laughs> so is that what we see <laughs> Is that, do we have the honorable member? Yes. Okay. Good to have you, honorable member. We have also Libras Oshoma with us in studio, and uh, we've started a conversation with you. We will come to you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Libras, share, share your thoughts before we go to yeah, the honorable uh, quickly, member. Um, like I say, in a state of lawlessness, it becomes illegal to be law abiding. So what we see everywhere now is lawlessness at the highest level. Um, you know, um, government officials are lawless. Um, ministers are lawless. Lawmakers are lawless. There are people who are supposed to be lawmakers and lawbreakers. Mm. The police is lawless. EFCC lawless. The height of lawlessness is what we are seeing, the drama we are seeing in NDDC. And, and so you now begin to ask yourself, is Nigeria a, 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 a circus? You know, because in, in, in other societies, when you hear the kind of lawlessness going on here, mm. you marvel, you wonder, you know. So it just, sometimes you even get frustrated talking about Nigeria, you know, but we can't stop, you know, talking about it. Because and, I'm going to say it's all hope know, lost already. Yeah, you, you know, talking about it, educating people. And now, um, like your last guest just said, it's obvious that we are here, we are here. Mm. And, and so... Um, one thing we can do is either make the best of it, make it better, or make it worse. And if you think that um, you know you can you can steal all the money and build yourself mansions, mm. just remember that there were people who came before you and they built mansions, and those mansions today are inhabited by cockroaches and lizards. And so someday, yours also, you know, will be like that. What the only legacy you can leave behind is your good name mm. and um, the impact you made to humanity and your society. That's what you'll be remembered for. Today, we still discuss the Awolowos, the Obafemi, uh, the Nandia Zikiwe, the Sadauna, Tafa Balewa. Mm -hmm. How many people remember that Chiki Odenwa was once a governor in Imo State? How many people even still remember people like Loki Benedio? Mm. If I asked you was the governor of Sokoto State in 1999, you wouldn't even remember, <laughs> even as a journalist, because they were not impactful. Impact. You know, how many people can still remember the first uh, Senate president in this democratic dispensation? You know, so this, these people should remember. It is not about the argument, the back and forth, or the activism that you bring into it that you'll be remembered for, but the impact that you made positive you know mm. while in public office and so i'll yield the floor briefly so mm. that for the honorable, honorable member can um, 
All right, Honorable Ben, uh, it's now to you. Uh, what should be the normal procedure, you know, followed where subjects to an inquiry have no confidence in the objectivity of, you know, uh, those who are supposed to be probing or investigating issues in this country? Well, um, first, let me thank you. Well, the first thing is the fact that um, everybody has a right to protest if you are not comfortable with, um, with anybody that is sitting on your matter. It's just like a lawyer going to the court and say, well, recuse yourself, Mr. Judge, because I don't have confidence in you. I might not get ju uh, justice in your court. You wait for the judge to give his ruling. But um, in this case, uh, the, the team led by Professor um, Daniel Ponde stood up without waiting for the for the judge to decide whether the, the chairman has to step aside or the chairman. But um, that is the Nigeria we have found ourselves. Uh, we are gradually eroding the democracy that we are now practicing. Uh, it is wrong, and nobody he has no he has every right to protest if he feels that he will not get justice. But he has no right to stand up and walk away on the committee. Mm. I mean, you said uh, if I use your words there, that, that's the Nigeria that we found ourselves in. Our, our earlier guest mentioned and said, "Look, it's time for us to educate ourselves and to set the standard." You know, we, we talk about all of these things. When is the time and how do we go about, you know, setting these standards and correcting the so many wrongs that we seem to be going on in our country and in all of our systems, yeah. if you like? Yes, um, I would say we don't have enough laws. Uh, like uh, like uh, Topo said, uh, it's, a, it's a system and a product of leadership. Um, I, I must commend President Buhari for speaking up. Um, for the first time, he spoke up timely. Uh, on the issue that uh, is happening between his uh, appointees and the National Assembly. But the National Assembly is, um, is an arm of government created by the Constitution. And Section 88 and 89 of the Constitution give the, the National Assembly the latitude to actually carry out proofs, um, seek for evidence, and it's a must, that you must respect them, you must come before them, and any information they want from you, so long as it is to prevent corruption, wasted and inefficiency, the National Assembly has every right to do that. Oh. And uh, if you feel that in the course of it, you are not comfortable with whoever is sitting on it, you have the right to, to say, no, I am not comfortable because I won't get justice, but you have no right to walk away. You must wait for the, for the, for the person to, to give it truly. Oh. You must remember that uh, in that committee we were about 70, and because of this probe, it was prone to a thing of us. And uh, you, you, well, it's just one person. And we're talking about democracy where uh, majority is always in charge. If you come to the, if you listen to the hearing, uh, most of the questions are coming from people outside, not the, not the chairman. The chairman is only to moderate and guide. He mm -hmm. cannot decide. He cannot take certain decisions. And even when we are done with this work, he cannot sign the report on his own. We must all look at the report and be sure that the report is fair and it's a true representation of all that transpires. So I think that it is the issue of leadership that we should start um, implementing our constitution and our laws. Uh, by, 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 our, by our laws, those people that walk away, that is the concept of the legislation, and they are supposed to be in prison and brought in handcuffs today to answer the question. Hmm. That, uh, they are, they are to answer. Very tough uh, suggestions there. Well, Libras is still in, in studio and he's itching to say something. So I'll say, please uh, uh, be on the line. Uh, let me hear what Libras has got to say. Li Libras, um, yes. uh, Honorable Ben said that, that he's happy that the president has you know, waded in and <laughs> said something. So uh, are you hopeful that now that the president has come out what to, did he say? that uh, we'll see some timely, sanity infused into this? timely investigation. Is that what the president should be tell telling us? Are you so saying that was, it makes no difference? Why, it makes no difference. His statement, uh, this, that statement makes no difference. Those are not, the kind, those are not presidential statements. We want a timely investigation. There's already an ongoing investigation. Whether timely, we should be seeing, there should be, uh, the consequences should follow actions. Hmm. You know, uh, look, the National Assembly had rubbished himself before some of this, you know, uh, government appoint appointees or ministers. A situation where, you know, it's almost as if you, it's a case of rub my back, I rub your back. Mm. And then the people also are part of this problem. When you elect a lawmaker, you need to understand what's the primary responsibility of a lawmaker, make laws and perform oversight function. But the moment you begin to ask lawmakers, what have you attracted to your place?
You know, he leaves the, the function of lawmaking and is seeking for projects. And then election is so expensive that all they think about is money also. Mm. That's on one side. And so when you do that, you begin to curry favor from institutions that you're supposed to be oversighting. A situation where a parastata you're oversighting will pay money for you to travel abroad for trainings. Mm. And in some cases, you don't even go. You don't retire these funds. And then that committee is investigating you. You will have the effrontery to work out on them. The head, because also you have a president who will, rather than take decisive step, will say, uh, let the investigation be timely. Also, a situation where a minister will, you have slots, you give 15% to lawmakers, you give 15% to your fellow ministers, you give 15% slots to governors. At the end of the day, what you are telling people is that there are slots mm. to be given. And, and so anybody that now says, look, let's sit down and understand how you're giving out this slot. Also, we have, you, you, to a very large extent, we'll... we'll, um, we'll um, uh, the, the reason for his call will be germane and genuine. Mm. You know, so let's leave all this uh, uh, issue of uh, Section 88 and Section 89 of trying to cop cor corruption. Or that uh, there is the main issue here is that look, we the people who are so the only thing we know a lawmaker for is what did you bring for us? And so when the lawmakers get there, they are looking for what to bring for us. Mm. So in the process, you know, if in the process they corruptly and nepotistically. You know, corner contract and jobs to the server, their constituency, we hail them. So this is what is at play. Look at um, also the case of the NDDC. You know, I remember the case of Hembe, Honorable Hembe and um, uh, Aroma Ote. And I felt ashamed at, at, at that sitting mm. where a, 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 a pastata under investigation will look the committee chair in the eye and say, look, you do not even the right to sit down there. It's wow. like a lawyer openly accusing a judge in a matter. Mm -hmm. That was what Saying played you out. are as corrupt. You are as corrupt, so you can't even sit down here. And then, you know, you also have this case, the, the NDDC chair sits down and say, look, I cannot appear before you because you are part of the people that we are also investigating in NDDC. Because, mind you, the NDDC also have accused the National Assembly, the Interim Management Committee has accused the National Assembly of padding the budget with almost 500 contracts. So you see, very you're not begin, you, you see, you're not beginning to ask yourself, mm -hmm. so we should come first. You know, so there are accusations here, there are counter-accusations here. So, that's where it becomes very rotten and, and smelling, and it's almost like a circus. Hmm. So that's why I said, look, the legacy you can leave behind is your good name. You stand tall. The case of Joy Nune is very sad. Also, because the question, there was some, a question somebody asked me, said, look, all of these are entertainment and drama. You slap a you didn't slap a Oh, you manage money, you didn't manage money. There are basic questions people would ask. How did you even become the NDDC uh, uh, chairman of interim management committee? The interim management committee is unconstitutional in itself. So the National Assembly sits down and investigates the interim management committee that is unconstitutional. You have even approved violent. For, right. for, 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 for them at some point. Mm. And there are accusations, are counter accusations. That's why I tell people nothing will come out of it. We have seen Farouk uh, Lawa's probe. Uh, let me see. We have if... seen the power probe. We have seen, um, you know, Aroma test probe. Nothing will come out of it. Let me check Buhari with the honorable member. Buhari also is not aware. <laughs> All right. Uh, Libras, I can see you're very passionate about this. But let me check with uh, the honorable member. I know you are still there, honorable uh, member. Ben, thank you for still yes, being uh, there. Uh, you, you, you have heard how strongly and fiercely Libras has made his point. I, I'm wondering, what's your position on this? Do you completely agree with Libras? And what other dis disciplinary or measures should be put in place to ensure there is an orderliness and credibility to our systems of inquiry and accountability. So we are not in a place where, you know, it looks like it's all drama of uh, corruption outplay. Okay, um, first, I agree with liberals on the issue as regards um, um, honorable members being sponsored for trips, and um, there's no way you can supervise somebody who pays the piper. He pays the piper at the tune. And uh, it's sad that um, you have to, you are supervising an agency and you have to get money from the agency. To supervise the agency, they have to fund you. I think that is okay. And that is why we need to look at the budget of the National Assembly. 
so that they can do their work effectively without looking uh, for other sources of, uh, of uh, income. There are some probes, you see some, some uh, investigation that is going on, and you see the chairman constrain the investigation because there's no money. That's one. Then two, on the issue of budget padding, it's not like budget it's only applicable when a budget has been passed into law and somebody somewhere mischievously went behind and added something to it. The role of the National Assembly as a shrine in the Constitution is to make laws, and budgets are laws. They are appropriation laws. So whichever way the, the, the lawmakers like it, add money, remove money, cancel a project, put in projects, is still within the, 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 the sphere of their responsibility as lawmakers. Then on the issue Environment. I don't think the, the, the committee has made any approval of environment. You see, most of the procurement that they made, especially that which has to do with um, the procurement of the, the, the lead consultant of the auditors, and it was done, um, uh, mischievously done by the Interim Management Committee and the, and the, and the, and the, the former government of the Um they, they presented the 2020 budget to, to Federal Executive Council and the PPP. Those are the areas, that's exactly some of the areas we are looking at today. To, to, that's why we invited them to come. BPP will be there. They will look at it because you can't put something on nothing. And there's no budget. To take and you got approval for a budget that is, uh, I'll call it a budget that is still on the way. It, it, it's speculative and that there's no law that says that a budget that is here to be passed can actually stand for a project. The Procurement Act forbids it. So those are the things we've never uh, done any environment for NDDC. NDDC budget is in 2020 is still being done. They just brought it some days ago. The committee looked at it that there are some errors and we allow them to go back and correct it because All if, right, you, if remember, you go I don't Now, what, what's your thoughts? Do you think that the National uh, Assembly needs more money now that you know uh, people are saying that they are overfunded? What more do they need? No. Extra money. They, they are not. You see, you see, when you talk about the National Assembly, you talk about the, the civil servants that are there. How many? Um, the, the member elected are just 469. 469 is like 10% of the persons working. You talk about their age, you talk about the civil servants, the, the numerous clerks, the committee secretaries, and the staff. So it, it's the National Assembly is a big institution. It's not just Senators. So actually, they need funding. They, need money. they don't have money. There's no way they can do that which they are supposed to do. Because I, I, I find it, I find out it when a committee supervising the ministry should actually go to the ministry to fund them to supervise you. Then what do you have to say by the time you get to the to the to the ministry? It, it's sad, and uh, something just has to be done. All right, honourable member uh, Libros, what's your thoughts uh, there? Yeah. Um, do they need more money? Uh, the question I will ask first and foremost is that, you know, when the National Assembly is preparing its budget for the year, there are seminars, there are conferences that you know they don't attend. that you will attend. <clears throat> okay. Do you know to enhance the job, part of the oversight job, part of legislative legi legislating job? Insurance. So all of these conferences and committees should be part of the budget so that the little that you are given, let people see that you have judiciously used it. And then when you now ask for more, people will, you don't even need to because the rest of us will clamor for more money for you mm -hmm. because we have seen what you're doing with the little that you have been given. But when it is only when you are buying expensive cars in the midst of this crisis, we also know how the National Assembly, House of Rep took delivery of expensive cars that we do not manufacture. So the moment, no matter how genuine, the moment you ask for more money, no matter how genuine it is, people are going to find out it. That look, the one you have already, we see how you use it stupendously. And so asking for more money for oversight, for mm. us, in a land that where even your people can, are feeding with less than a dollar a day, that would be heartless hmm. to ask for more. Because yeah. if you look at the budget, you look at the national budget, look at what the executive takes, you look at what the legislature takes, and then what goes to the judiciary, you now begin to ask yourself, what comes to the rest of Nigerians? You know, so that's this where I have a problem mm -hmm. with giving more money to some of these institutions, not just the National Assembly. All right, not just the National Assembly. Before I let you go, Honorable Member, how do we renew the trust 
and confidence of Nigerians on our leadership. But now I have to come back to the issue of uh, the process of election area. The people that we elect. And again, the people that are electing. Like the uh, Tokwe said, you, you, you talk about the, the issue of a legislator. We all know they have three functions. And if we can if we can be allowed to stick to those functions that the constitution created for us. And again, you have to talk about the leadership, the caliber of person, the capacity of person that is being elected, not just because you have a big pocket and you are the, you are automatically the winner. Let us be humane, let us be reasonable, let us look at the caliber, the capacity, the strength, the knowledge. We elect people, leaders that uh, have the pain of the people, the issues of the people at heart. I am sure we will all do the right thing at the right time. Mm. Honorable Ben Igbapa, thank you so very much. And like you said, let us all be reasonable. I hope we will keep being reasonable. Do stay safe out there, sir. Thank you very much.